where's the line between truth and belief when it comes to spirituality and religion? For example, some people believe in reincarnation. Some people believe in life after death, like in heaven. And other people believe that when you die, that's it. There's nothing more to come. Which of these things is true? There are many different beliefs. And everyone believes that what they believe is true. And that's part of what we call dogma, that set belief that we really hold on to. When we think of dogma, we typically think about religion. For instance, we may have the image of the evangelical Christian who says that if you want to be saved, you have to believe these things and say this prayer and have the same experience I've had. That's dogma. But there are many other forms of dogma. In religion, it can look like beliefs that it's a sin to miss church on Sunday or to eat pork or drink alcohol. But in sort of more contemporary spiritual practices, dogma also comes in the forms of things like uh, beliefs about prosperity or the law of attraction or other things referred to as spiritual laws. Those are all dogma. How do we know what's true? How do we understand them? And Take a moment right now and subscribe to this video and click that bell so you get notifications. There are some things about spirituality and religion that we do know to be true. For instance, I talk about some of them in the video, How to Meditate for Your Mind and Body. We know that the practice of meditation and other spiritual practices help improve your physical health and your mental well-being. We also know that if you believe in a deity, if you believe in God, and your image of that deity is a generous, kind, loving, compassionate being, then you have fewer physical health issues and have overall better mental health. Conversely, if your belief in a deity is that God's out to get you and is judgmental and is going to condemn you, then you have an increase in anxiety and depression, as well as poor health outcomes. So what you believe does impact what happens to your body and to your mental health. But beyond that, what role does dogma really play? I think it would be helpful for us to consider the ways we hold on to dogma as being true, and we all do that, as well as to consider how dogma can really be more metaphorical in its truth. So going back to Christianity in the Bible, many Christians find it very threatening to suggest that there are contradictions in the Bible. And the thing is, you can plainly see these contradictions. There are multiple stories about the same events and the facts just don't add up and people become even more defensive when they learn from biblical scholars that figures like Jonah or Ruth are not real people, that these were written as stories that are essentially moral fables, stories meant to convey a certain meaning, that their truth, the truth in the story, is the meaning that it's trying to convey. In a similar way, though, Truth is conveyed in all dogma. There's something that's real there. So I had the opportunity to learn from several different Native American elders. And in their sharing with me, they shared many stories from their traditions. For instance, there was a Navajo healer who told me stories about Spider Woman and the way Spider Woman knit together the earth. It's a beautiful story about the inner relationships and the web of life. That didn't mean I thought the story was literally true, that the facts were right. Now, I understand that the prevalent uh, scientific understanding is that the cosmos came about because of the Big Bang Theory. And I'm sure he knew that too. He was an educated man. But there was something true and beautiful in the story 
of Spider Woman that talked about relationships and living in a balance in Earth. And there are many other ways that stories like that convey truth, but that truth isn't literal. I think it's helpful for us to begin looking at dogma and teachings in terms of the metaphoric truth, the symbolism that they are meant to convey. I have some friends who are Jewish, and I spoke with one who was particularly observant. Uh, she's very careful to be sure that her family always observes Shabbos, the Sabbath rest from Friday evening to Saturday evening. I asked her about that observance and what that meant for her. She began by saying that, you know, it, it's not that I think that I'm wrong or that I'm, I'm doing something I shouldn't be by not keeping Shabbos. Instead, she said, what I find is having that time where I pull out of life and don't work and just be is recreative for me. It's a time of real rest and rejuvenation for me where I find myself at home in myself. And in addition, she finds that it builds better bonds within her family, that she's more connected with her family, and that they are more at peace with each other because of that time they spend. So that there's something beautiful and nurturing and transformative about that Shabbos experience. And that's helpful for us to think about dogma and about various teachings. Their truth isn't literal. But instead, the truth is meant to help us find our way to be more transformed, growing, and better people. So I encourage you not to be overly bound up in your dogma and definitely don't impose it on anybody else. That's unfair and disrespectful. But instead, look for deeper meaning about the things you believe and how they inform your life to help you grow more fully and at the same time, keep it all in perspective, that it's not absolute truth, but it's a symbolic truth. Thanks for being here. Tell me what you think of this video. Leave me some comments, subscribe, like, and click the bell. And have a great day.